it for us. And here we go, everyone. Game number three. And we have Fantix once more on the left side here. Coming in once more with the 39 Gods motorized. Whilst Duro SVK is bringing around his not-so-secret but really strong weapon in the 82nd Air One, A division that... He has boasted around that he thinks it's the strongest in the game. Let's see if he can bring that up. 87, uh, airborne on the right. 39 mod guards motorized on the left. On the lovely, lovely reworked two ways. And it's gonna be hot. It's gonna be really, really hot. But before we jump in, once more, quick shout out to the Maturino. Where you can help out funding the tournament a bit more. We have these sponsor quests on the side. Big thanks to all the codes being claimed. And us going up to $406.20 in prize pool. So this really is quite a decent prize pool difference that they used to fight over. With the winner taking 60% of it. And the loser of this only taking 20% of the prize pool home. So there is a three-digit difference in that prize pool for these two. And let's go. ABCV in the north. ABCV in the south. So, Duro once more going for capturing a lot of zones here. At least, unlike Dark Neutron, there is a CV start from Fantex from the get-go. Let's see if he starts with two. I guess he will only start with one, so he will still be down in points. Uh, first reason, airborne units arrive faster, so they capture faster. And second, it's two versus one. And let's see what Duro will follow this all up with. Uh, I am surprised by Fantix going uh, for so many units down towards Delta. I think he might fear and rush. Yeah, he's... I mean, that actually absolutely could come, right? Like, yeah, here we go. Military police. Nope, they're going for defensive setup. So, interesting start there. Red Red Guy coming around in the north, T62 coming around in the north, MP2 and Motor Strikes will get in here. Meanwhile, up in the north, another AB. Good amount of forces. Good amount of AT force. Red Guy Saperis, MP3s, and all of this coming around. Yali. Would you start two CVs or one CV on this map? Depends. Like, I would start one CV usually. And, I mean, two CVs is just exp really expensive, right? On this, a map where you kind of need to get a lot of stuff on the front line. Because my route, if I'm on the Duro side, is to go to Alpha, into Bravo, Echo, and then Charlie. That's like the uh, yeah, milk but, route. But if you I, get what I, I mean. get why he starts with two CVs as the as the air one formation. I mean, he will just cut the Echo Charlie part of yours and he will just go Alpha Bravo and then Echo Charlie. And then he yeah. will get a really good point advantage. So, I think his way of things making sense with airborne division you usually want to get things at that point advantage early on. So they're either really close at finishing off the enemy or at least having some leeway in the late game where they can give the enemy a bit of room. So Absolutely. Uh... Fantix has won uh, CV so far. It's going the Delta Golf Fox Rod Charlie route. Uh, yeah. He. Yeah, he's an interest. Yeah, his his route is similar. But a bit longer there. Um, I, I feel like he should go the other way. Uh, no, it's I mean it's pretty hard from Delta up to Charlie, right? So yeah, you have to go it this way around. Makes sense. But the the roads are a bit, a slightly bit worse. Well, I guess the, I'm not sure. The Delta Golf might be faster than the, especially with the no, new road there. Yeah, I think it might be faster now, than the Alpha Bravo route. But then the Foxtrot Charlie route, uh, the, the Golf Foxtrot is a bit longer than the Bravo Echo, I think. Should be still relatively but the same. Uh, I 
I'm curious how he is gonna play it though. Yeah. It seems to open very defensively. Um, uh, Duro, you mean? Yeah, yeah, Duro. I thought he was gonna go more offensively. No, I, I, he believes that this division can go really long game and is still the strongest. So, and he's usually not a rusher. Like I, I never, yeah. in no game I've ever played against Duro in Steel Division, normally 44 or Steel Division 2. He has just face rushed me. He's not the Yeah, he hasn't rushed me in War No either, so I do get that point. It's just that in this matchup, I, I, I do believe that 82nd can go the long game. But in this matchup, you are at a severe disadvantage after 25, 30 minutes. Well, he, he believes that it's not the case. So I don't. Uh, yeah, I get why he's not doing yeah. it out of his pen standpoint. He thinks 82nd is just the strongest all, all game. So. Yeah, let's see. We are into the action, everyone. With, on the left side, Pantex bringing around the 39th Guard Stroll Trophy in, and Duro bringing around the 82nd Air One in game number three of this best of five. Whoever wins here will be on match point, and it's a really, really hot match. As you can see the bands, 3rd US, 4th Moto, and 8th Infantry once more. And Duro now on his favorite division. 82nd Airborne coming in here, whilst Fantex once more on the true and the tried and tested 39th Guards motorized. And Duro starting with the double CV opener here, will get a solid point advantage, already on a plus 4 now. We'll get into Charlie and Bravo soon, should allow him a plus 7 for a while, as the BTR will at least stop it being a plus 9, then it will be a plus 5, then it will be a plus 3, and then maybe Fantix will equalize it, but at that point, Duro will already have a solid couple hundred points of advantage here. And whilst he gets into military police all around. Um, thing is though, yeah, if he, Duro plays slowly, the late game composition of 39th potentially should beat the late game composition of 82nd. 82nd has no long range AA, 82nd has no um, self propelled artillery pieces, and 82nd has only a few couple Abrams. So and no the infantry fighting vehicles that uh, grinds my gear with 82nd going long because uh, BMB 2s and BMB 3s, if they get the time to build up a massive force, it doesn't matter how many ATGMs your opponents have, you just walk them back and forward in smoke and just slowly chips away at uh, the fire team dragons or tow 2s. Motor Strahlke coming around, plus 7 now here for Duro. So that's quite a lot of points here. Well, I think we... this, as Nalid said in the chat earlier, is a uh, game where the air game is going to de decide it. Air game for sure going to be important. I would say it's just about Duro, how Duro plays on the ground in Charlie, though. I think that's the most important part. If he can get his dragon ATGMs long enough in Charlie that his plus 5 and then plus 3 can take up to victory. Like, he gets a good head start now, and then if he can keep Charlie uncontested, he absolutely can get the victory there. And then the question is, will he ever go for his push in the south? We already saw the first S uh, A-10 rocket coming around, but it didn't engage further. Meanwhile, we have a good couple of stingers for the south. Tantix realizes that he has to stop the uh, Tikto is buying an old CV, sending that to Foxtrot so the other one can go directly into Charlie. Yeah, 500 points now by now for Duro, but I guess only 100 or so more points to be gained. So no 1000 point advantage, anything in that favor for Duro this time around. But Mo AB Military Police, first engaging unit down here in the south. Let's see. If they can be killed off by the Retro Casaperi and the BMP3. BMP3 for sure really strong on these open fields on the flanks. And yeah, now it's only a plus two. The BTR in the north soon should arrive and make it an even situation. We have now just being preaching 600 points here for Duro SVK. Meanwhile, BMP-1P coming in the north, TADBV moving around as well. 
And yeah, plus two is now over. 626 points is the advantage that Duro got by his CV play. He also secured one of his CVs now in the far rear. That's interesting. Not parking anywhere close, just wanting to keep it safe in the back pocket. Able to tilt towards Alpha or Bravo, depending on which of these zones is contested. Uh, interesting play. And yeah, this kind of place, they will really start to come up now with the CV changes and positioning and where you park your CVs and so on. It will be interesting what the meta around those will be. If plays like this will be the standard or if you still want to keep them more aggressively parked. As we have, T62 is now pushing over the open and yeah, now not having any long range ATGMs or so there already starts to become a problem. No Apache around, no A10 with AT missiles, only the rocket one which can deal with T62Ms, but needs a bit longer there. Meanwhile, we have a fire team AT4 though, going for some sneaky sneak here. And what I also would maybe like to see is a big for a big old school forest push out of um, Duro with like a CV leader in it and some uh, some airborne units and then a lot of stingers and just moving that through the forest. That's the way how Ski usually played this map back in the day, and I think it's still potent enough. But Superior RPO overwhelming the flash here, and so far, I think Fantix has done a really good job of stabilizing the game and getting his 39th into a decent spot. Fantix is in a great position. Uh, and if he just keeps this slow, chipping away action going, uh, I think the snowball can be massive. Yeah, he also will fight the fire team 84 most likely here. Ah, no, it's getting just over the ridge of the hill. So the Mi Fantix is really on point today with uh, uh, shutting down any sneak. Uh, I think he got hardened by Hippie and is now practicing it against uh, Duro pretty well. Yeah, he's on point with covering all the forest with helicopters. Yeah, one eighty four most likely will sneak down through the south, but that is fine for now. Um, his BMP-3 also went down to an airborne dragon, but he keeps on shooting now onto some stingers. So yeah, the damage on Duro's forces is still quite annoying. Who now brings in AH-1F Heavy Hawks as his helicopter of choice. So not starting with Apaches, Heavy Hawks a lot cheaper. Um, but also run out of ammo really, really quickly. But the damage the Zunis can do is quite massive. They come in here for the first attack. You can annihilate an infantry within a second. Osas coming around on the side now. We have one, two, three, four Osas already on the battlefield. So the AA play for sure is serious on the side of Fantix. No man pads, no Iglas. Not a big fan of those. I guess against armored eight hands and Apaches, it's also not the most efficient. But against Heavy Hawks, they can be pretty good because they two-shot all of these eight hit points helicopters. Motostalki BMP with BMP threes in the south, rolling in here. Fantix being a fan of the school of the BMP three, playing a lot more with those than with BMP ones and BMP twos. But he has those around as well. I guess he has a card of each kind to just have the choices, but in the last game we saw him a lot more with BMP3s than with BMP2s. He's also diversifying a lot more from just spamming T-80BVs and T-80Bs uh, with a lot more T-62s and infantry fighting vehicles as you're speaking of on the map. Yeah, I like I like his start way more than last game. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, A-10 rocket though, scary thing in the sky here. But Osa's in pretty decent position, they should be able to repel it. And Osa yeah. one of the units where the suppression is actually implemented right, uh, correctly, so they can push back an A-10A relatively quickly here. Okay, double cluster incoming, I see the plane and the A-10, let's see what's going down. Oh, <laughs> oh. that could be massive. Ah, oh, Infantic's not... Not turning off against the seed. First Osa goes down. That was an excellent airstrike. 
That was a really That is good textbook execution. how you should do it. If the F15 comes in now and shut down the SU-37, he is getting an S plus on that uh, execution. Oh, yeah. SU-27 goes down through the A10 and the Avengers, and this is not looking good. He also loses the A10, so it's a fair trade. It's an okay trade, but you only get two SU-27s, so yeah. losing one of them here early. But, but the air, the um, anti-air in 39 versus 80 seconds should really come from the ground. The SU-27s are more supplementar supplementary than uh, necessary, in my opinion. And Fantix really needs to start to, con uh, to control crew Pizolsas and start turning yeah. them off against the seat. Not not doing the anti-seat macro really pays. Uh, uh, hurts him time and again. It's a parry RPO moving forward. The seat being pinned down. Big F. M1 IP getting a nice kill. PB5 team 84 moving forward. BTR 60 PK, PBK coming in. Not the strike under heavy fire and really well executed airstrike there. The seat doing its job absolutely masterfully. And then the cluster bomber doing the perfect strike on the perfect target. Getting a TADBV, getting the CV. And Mantix just completely, completely annihilated in the center. And the BTR now trying to come in, but that's not a good timing. That airborne is really close to it. It needs to get the hell out of there. You can't lose that CV. And M1 uh, Abrams also is so beautifully parked at the moment, where it can shoot down all three lanes uh, at the same time. Yeah, so far, great execution by... by uh, Fantix is pushing back with his T80BV in the bottom side and are getting pummeled by Heavy Ox and uh, AT GMs. I think yeah. that T80BV is going down. T80BV is in a really, really rough spot. Ah, can it get back into the smoke in time? Oh, it gets back into the smoke just in time. BMP3 and T62M trying to help out, but that T80BV has to be really careful. There's a U-Roll to repair it back up. Fantex in general, really strong on the repair part of the of the game. He always has a supply truck next by for that reason. Not always for resupplying his AA pieces, but for repairs he's really on point with it. But the A10 is lurking above, trying to hunt down the T80BV. And it's coming in now. Oh, the Osa. The Osa is exposed to the A10. First Osa not hitting. And he gets. It was too far out in the open. A10 gets the kill. MiG 23 MLD coming in for the kill onto the A10. Should be able to get it. But there's a Luff AA on the other side. F15 gets the kill as well. And air superiority here now. Bro also just got super valuable information. Neither his A10 or F15C got shot out by AA when flying over uh, the Delta point, which means that he can go aggressive with his helicopters. He also has a fire team 84 parked low in Delta, so if Fantex tries to get reinforcements in there, that 84 is really deadly. And the one in the north, even though there was a Mi 8 there, still got through. And He's also getting his uh, fire team 84 uh, in a position where he can fire on the road on the northern side. Yeah. Both. Oh, no, 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 don't leave the, the district now. This is really bad time. Ah, he's microing it back. He's microing it oh, back. He's realizing. He's getting it back in. Yeah, this is looking really hot for Duro right now. I think he has made too many videos lately showing all the sneak possibilities. Yeah, BMP1P goes down. Oh. Good kill. Another Osa coming up in the rear. And. Ah, uh, this is not looking good for Dur uh, for Fantex here in game number three. Oh, another uh, well-executed there strike. And, and Fantex surrenders. Yeah. Yes, Duro goes really far ahead here. These airstrikes getting so much value. The first cluster bomber got a BMP3, a TADB, a T62, and a BTR. The seat plane helping out big time as well, and really really well educated play here and, and and more importantly going forward for the next match this really felt like a fantix throwing his fit surrender uh, as the airplanes came uh, so he might be really tilted going into game uh, four yeah at least now he has two bands again so he can ban fourth and and 82nd if he wants to um, is two ways the next map no 
We just played. No, sorry, two lakes, I mean. Yeah, two lakes is the next map. Too many two use in this game. Yeah. Two lakes is the next map. So let's see how this goes. Uh but yeah, short break guys. Then we're gonna be back. Uh as I also have a doorbell. <laughs>